Citizens speak out. The call for basic freedoms and democratic principles continues as people risk their safety and even their lives to gather and speak as one voice in countries across the globe, including Bahrain, Burundi, China, Egypt, Libya, Morocco, Syria and Yemen. Tunisians blockaded employees of UK-based BGU Group for 48 hours on Monday, May 16th, as they called for the energy company to fulfill its previous promise to hire more locals rather than bringing people from outside the country. According to the New York Daily News, Mariam al khawaja daughter of leading Bahraini human rights activist Abdeladi al khawaja announced that her father had been severely abused while imprisoned when he refused to videotape an apology to the country's king and that she has received threats of similar treatment. Meanwhile, the Bahrain Youth Society for Human Rights reports that students at the University of Bahrain are being told they must sign a pledge of loyalty to the current regime or be expelled from school. Meanwhile, two ships attempting to bring letters from Iranians to Bahraini protesters were turned back when they encountered coalition warships of countries engaged in the crackdown on protesters in Bahrain. Around 10 Moroccans were injured Sunday when they were blocked by police from reaching the headquarters of the National Intelligence Services to protest human rights abuses at a detention centre in Tamara. The Moroccan National Press Union also spoke out against the aggressive handling of the press attempting to cover the protests. Egypt's former First Lady Suzanne Mubarak, who was detained for questioning over potential illegal profiting from her husband's position as president, relinquished 3.4 million US dollars in cash and authorized the sale of a villa she owns. Various press agencies report that she and the former president possess several billion dollars, which has drawn criticism in a country where the majority live on less than two US dollars per day. A court in Burundi freed journalist Jean-Claude Kavumbagu after 10 months of detention, while in China, detained the artist Ai Weiwei was allowed to meet with his wife for the first time after two months of imprisonment. The Russian government has offered to mediate the Libyan conflict. This follows a meeting Sunday between UN officials and Libyan Prime Minister Baghdadi al-Mahmoudi, where the UN called once again for a ceasefire as well as full humanitarian access. Amidst the International Criminal Court's prosecutors' moves to issue arrest warrants of Libyan leaders who have abused their power, the Arab League meanwhile requested its satellite operator, Arabsat, to halt the transmission of Libya's state-owned television channels, in compliance with the United Nations Security Council resolution. Libya's top oil official, chairman of Libya's National Oil Corporation, or NOC, Dr. Shukri Ghanem, has been reported to have defected from Colonel Muammar Gaddafi's regime. In Syria, Thousands of pro-democracy protesters marched in a nighttime funeral procession on Monday in Sakbar for a 26-year-old who had been fatally wounded by security forces as more than 300 fellow citizens reached the Lebanese town of al Biro, fleeing the violent oppression. Adding to the 100 reportedly killed so far, a mass grave with 13 bodies was discovered on Monday in the Syrian town of Daraa. With deep sorrow for the lives lost, we are heartened by the glimmers of peace in regions of turmoil, and we pray for an end to all conflict, as people in every nation choose to live in shared tranquility, dignity and freedom.